welcome to the lecture on methods and approaches of public administration this is a topic which is very important to understand at the beginning of the study of a discipline like public administration there is no one method or there is no one approach to the study of public administration public administration as a social science in fact has emerged in course of collaboration with many other social sciences sometimes even with some natural sciences like physics or mathematics or statistics now the point is that uh, public administration we know very well it has been made clear earlier that it emerged towards the end of the 19th century in the united states though we know as indians that what is taught in public administration that is to say what goes on the government what is goes on within the government and what is the problem with governance as such now all these things in ancient india we know were touched upon in very detail by kautilya or chanakya now in modern times public administration as a separate subject of study as a discipline in social sciences emerged so to say in 1889 when woodrow wilson made a plea for separating the study of politics from administration arguing on the fact that administration deals with the raw data of government and politics is not any concerned with this now this approach basic approach of politics administration dichotomy is the starting point of the birth of modern study or discipline of public administration this was also supported by one of his contemporaries goodno now that was the idea at the beginning and then in course of time there were so other view points developed by specialist who were not very conscious about being public administration scholars as such at the beginning they were basically engineers and their main argument was how to improve efficiency in the productivity in a farm for example if we look at the taylor the, the arguments of taylor who uh, invented the theory of scientific management his argument was that productivity can be increased in any farm if entire factors called politics is not taken into account at all because management or administration is a very business like proposition and there must be definite principles so he suggested time and motion study that is how much time it takes and what movement of the body are necessary hands or brain or feet or anything else so these are the things that has to be implemented that has to be taken care of while deciding on the principle of administering or managing a particular farm and later in this connection he said that by increasing incentives the motion of the body and the time factor can be changed and production can be increased if we look at his successor who is this uh, main embodiment of classical theory of public administration henry feuol of france he was also an engineer now feuol he studied in his own farm the process of managing the people process 
of organizing the functions, the process of how the intact team spirit of the working force can be utilized all with the idea of bringing in discipline and efficiency. So he devised a long list of 14 principles, for example, the discipline, the hierarchy, the organization, and finally he also said that esprit de corps, that is team spirit. So there is these principles he found to be fundamental and he claimed that it, they are valid universally in any administrative organization. So this, with this beginning, we find that the methods are important and also we find that methods vary with the varying approaches. And in course of time, we find that these were also uh, slightly modified in the 1930s when there were some new approaches, for example, the approaches made by the Harvard School of Business, especially Professor Elton Mayo and his research team, they studied the Western Elective Company's Chicago Hawthorne plant. And there they studied it from a human relations point of view. The argument being that on an organization is basically a system and therefore there is some non-logical human relations factor which is very important in deciding how much efficiency and what kind of productivity, uh, what amount of productivity can be achieved. Now Elton Mayo and his team, they conducted this, this uh, field research from 1927 to 1932 and their data, huge data that they gathered with varying experiments within the farm were uh, laid down as principles of public administration that is called the human relations ad view or approach uh, in 1936-37. Now, during this time also, there was uh, some other attempt. For example, Mary Parker Follett, who emphasized the fact in a view that organization is some sort of a area in which a lot of things depend on the relations between persons who are working together. And there is a social approach, there is a point of view in which how people move like that, how they mix with one another, what kind of motivations are arrived at. So these kinds of things were raised and different methods, particularly analytical and um, statistical things came in. But all these were what is called the starting point of methodological discussions in public administration. We find that uh, basically this is what is called the traditional approach to start with. Now this traditional approach in public administration they again uh, can be uh, described as formal, first, secondly legal and third institutional approach. The methods adopted were basically to start with descriptive and analytical. Now major concerns that were raised were structure of personnel, framework of administration, financial administration, machinery of administration, bureaucracy and functions of 
administrators. So all these were supposed to be the essence of inquiry or methodological attempt at uh, looking at the discipline of public administration. Now, this uh, can be uh, studied, first of all, in terms of legal approach. That is uh, how the administration works within the constitutional framework. Because in any situation, in any democratic country, the organization, public or private, whatever it is, they have to abide by the constitutional framework as such, which is the highest in law. And there is also, say, secondly, a branch called administrative law, that is the kind of legal systems within the law which guide the public administration machinery. Now, uh, thirdly, one can say that there is a method what can be called and what has been called institutional. That is, the focus is not on law, focus is not on tradition, focus is not on the history of the evolution of an organization, but the focus should be on the concerned institutions which are uh, very important. For example, if we study the public administration that to start with, generally speaking, the governmental administration, then certainly there are institutions, for example, executive, legislature, judiciary, departments, regions, local administration, so in this way, these are the institutions which demand special angles of study or focus of these studies. Now this is what is called the general uh, methodological dimensions to start with. Now there was a time when the, uh, some scholars to start with Dwight Waldo, he in the 1940s, the, he said that, uh, well, all these are uh, well-worn things and the new thing that is emerging is another angle and that is the angle of looking at the process of administration, not the administration as an organization, not administration as a list of principles which, is, which was claimed and claimed very wrongly, he argued, that they will be valid, valid in all time, in all places, in all situations. So what was asserted at that time, I mean around about Second World War or immediately after that, that the administration if its nature is to be understood, if its nature is to be analyzed, then one must not depend on the history or evolution of an organization. One, they are all important, but they must not be uh, depending on this. Secondly, studying the legal framework, studying the constitution as such, typically is not the prob uh, basic work of public administration as such. Because in a society, everybody is uh, bound to obey the constitution. Everybody is bound to go by the law of the land. But point is, if a public administration is to be developed as a systematic academic discipline, then it must be very practical. Secondly, it must be scientific in nature and therefore, according to scientific inquiry, it has to devise, it, it has to devise its own sophisticated methods of study. Because theory building, without theory building, no discipline can claim maturity. Now what is theory? 
theory is uh, the result of preliminary investigations depending on the high tentative hypothesis and then testing the hypothesis in relation to the reality observed. So, at that time the statement is hypothetical statement and when it are tested and found either correct or wrong, the generalization has to be revised according to that and that is what may be called a theory when it reaches that statement of inquiry reaches a stage in which it can claim that given these, these, these circumstances, this kind of environment, this is every likelihood that this will be the result. So if, and the exceptions are all eliminated as far as possible and then and then only the scientist can claim that I have established a theory or theory if there is it is or wide applicability can be called a law. For example, law of gravitation in physics. Now it was devised or discovered after a long process of observation of hypothesis, taking hypothesis, elimination, testing and then retesting, re-verification going to the field again and then when they are satisfied that systematically some assertions, some statement can be made which will guide us to understand the basic nature of the discipline we are studying. So that applies to any theory and uh, to any field and especially a discipline like public administration which is by nature practical. It must, it must not deal with uh, emotion, it must not deal with any fantasy, it must not deal with wishful thinking. Therefore public administration and uh, in fact there must not be any ideology so to say. In politics it is possible to have an ideology and the politics can we will find subsequently in our discussion that politics constitutes the environment of administration that is right but administration it has been argued is not that very political as such. So the scientific view and the scientific approaches of public administration again comes to the point or the basic point or idea that politics and administration dichotomy must be accepted. But subsequently in the evolution of public administration the scientists claim, those who claim that we are the real uh, more systematic scientists in our investigations, they claim that this political, uh, the politics administration dichotomy has to be rejected. So this is the way a social science develops in case of public administration it developed through so many decades either having some assumptions either trying to have some basic principles claiming that there are certain concepts for example Luther Gulick he claimed and his collaborator also claimed that there are certain uh, concepts which are valid. For example, they said that a span of control, concept of hierarchy, uh, concept of coordination. So individually they developed these kind of concepts and they claimed that these are the real guiding concepts in the study of, an, of any organization, in the study of any management unit. So in this way, 
traditional, so to say, I, I, I use the word traditional not in any pejorative sense. I say something which is just whatever happened and it happened many important things. There were all up to the point when public administration was depending on scholarship, no doubt, inquiry, no doubt, but there was a general attempt at devising some concepts which, which will be essential and valid, some principles which will be applicable to all cases and all circumstances and thereby they claimed that public administration is a, a systematic study of what goes on in the name of governance or which goes on in details within the government. For example, there have been earlier L.D. White, he studied that um, the Jeffersonians studying the presidency of the American system of administration and government. A one book is called the Jeffersonians, that is which presidents during the last 40 years of United States, which president uh, they were following the populist, the rural based, the democratic form of uh, government teleoperations which was started by Jefferson. He also studied and made a book of the original founder fathers. Title of the book was The Federalist. That is how some persons within the original group called original fathers of the American constitution, they were for uh, asserting the federal aspect that is the federation, America contribution was a federal concept of federation and how the two pools, one center and the other were the constituent units. In America it is called states, in, the, it, in India also it is called states. So we find that in administrative debates, in political arguments, it all depends upon what angle or approach we take in studying the system. Of course, political system is the bigger and within the political system there is the system of administration. Now administration system or public administration as such must have certain guiding principles. One may loosely talk some ideological slant but ideology as such is not relevant. Public administration main focus as a matter of approach or details method is to utilize the instruments of scientific inquiry. That is, first collection of data. Secondly, the study of the persons and institutions in detail, as detailed possible, as detailed a manner possible. And thirdly, all these must be done dispassionately. For example, recruitment and is a problem, very important problem in administration, whether private or public. But recruitment can be done in very many ways. If it is done on patronage basis, then it opens the gate of corruption. If it is done on competitive examination basis, it can claim uh, scientific way of choosing the right persons at the right job. Now that was also the slogan of some of the early scholars of public administration. For example, Fayol I have talked about earlier. Now one of the 14 principles was also the right man at the right job. So this is the type of arguments in the history of evolution of public administration which has given rise to in course of time from the early 20th century then first decade, second decade, third decade there were one after another 
making very serious contributions but at the time at the same time they are developing the literature or methodology and approaches of public administration so this is i think we uh, we can round up the discussion for the part 1 one can say and we will meet again to take note of various post second world war uh, discussions and very important discussions which enriched this section on methods and approaches of public administration